In this video, I'm going to show you several different ways of how to prevent your water bottles from freezing in sub-zero temperatures. I'm going to show you how to manage your water bottles in your tent, and then in a backpack, and then also in a sled. The first thing you need to do is when you make your water normally at night, you want to make sure to put the hottest water you can possibly put in your hot water bottle because that's going to last till all the way tomorrow night when you make water again. Unless something goes terribly wrong, chances are you're not going to be making water in the morning unless you have to heat up the water again or some such thing. I've been to some crazy cold places, Antarctica and Denali, and once I make my water at night, I never have to make it again, and it rarely, if ever, ices up on me until the next evening. So make sure that's tip number one. Put the boiling hottest water you can stand in your water bottle and make a big difference. The second tip and trick is to make sure to get yourself some neoprene sleeves. These do surprisingly well in preventing your water bottles from icing up in sub-zero temperatures. Now, as you can see, the lid is still open, so there is some difficulty there, but this neoprene sleeve does surprisingly well. If you need something a little more serious, you can actually purchase complete enveloping, I want to call them sleeves, but more like pouches, where you can put your water bottle in, you can zip them up, and that will keep your water bottle completely enclosed and it'll stay even warmer. I'll put links below to these neoprene sleeves and these complete sleeves to keep your water bottles from freezing. Now, when you're in your tent, after you've made your hot water bottle, what do you do? Well, let me show you a couple different techniques of how I've maintained my water bottles from freezing in temperatures as low as minus 40, minus 50 degrees Celsius, or about the same minus degrees in Fahrenheit. The first thing you wanna do is, as soon as you get that water in your bottle, and you pour it very carefully, boiling pot, into this water bottle, you seal this bad boy up, you tilt it sideways always to make sure it doesn't leak because at minus 40 degrees, it's very easy to have ice build up on the threads in the bottle and you'll get leaking water. As soon as you get that in there, you want to get your bottle stuffed in the sleeve and then you want to put your water bottle in preferably a waterproof bag and then you take your bottle and immediately put it into your sleeping bag. Now, ideally you would keep your water bottle straight upright and you get that thing jammed in your sleeping bag because you don't want it to leak. And you simply sit there with the water bottle in your sleeve now, or water bottle in your, your backpack and sleeping bag. Because as soon as that water goes in there, it begins cooling down. Now I've got, I don't know, maybe nine inches or about uh, 17 centimeters and yeah, about 20 centimeters of down here this will keep my water bottle hot all night in the morning i still can wake up and enjoy somewhat warm water it's pretty incredible now once you get uh, you get in your sleeping bag what do you do well you keep your water bottle in the bag you seal the bag up and then you simply slide into your sleeping bag. I'm not going to crawl in my sleeping bag just to show you what it's like, but you get your feet spread out in your sleeping bag and you get that water bottle in between your legs here. And that way it also keeps it warm as well. There's a huge advantage to that because you can also use your water bottle to warm up your feet, which is a big deal. I've got a link below to how to keep your feet warm in the cold. It's a book I wrote. It tells you over 100 tips on how to keep your feet warm, so that's pretty handy. So when you're in your sleeping bag at night, get all of your water bottles jammed into, if I can reach it here, jammed into a, a waterproof bag or two. You get it in between your legs. You get in your sleeping bag. Yeah, if it can, because the sleeping bag's so thick, and you simply get it in there and you sleep. Now, you might say, that's uncomfortable, pretty much. 
You're not camping in minus 40 degrees Celsius or Fahrenheit because you enjoy comfort. Instead, you enjoy the challenge. And this is the way I've done it, is just laying there ah, in a very toasty situation. But what do you need to do when you're handling your water bottles at night? Well, what I do is if I need to, what I do is I take my down parka, this is another method, and simply do the same thing where I put my water bottles wrapped in my down parka, I stuff them in there, and I put my down bottles, or bottles right here beside me in my down parka. They stay incredibly warm, not as warm as in my sleeping bag, but it's totally effective. You will get a better night's sleep because you don't have a bunch of water bottles jangling around your legs, but the trade is the water is going to be a little cooler because there's no heat from your body in your parka, but this method works. I've done this at minus 30 and eh, minus 40 degrees is a bit cold for this method. And if it's really, really cold, you know, minus 40 or something like that, if you've got a spare hat or something that you can have, I would definitely recommend putting your bottles in that spare hat as well before stuffing it in here because the goal is not to have frozen water bottles. That's the whole target of this activity. Now, when you're done sleeping, camping, you wake up and your water bottles are still, eh, and they might be a room temperature, which is 20 degrees C or about 68 degrees Fahrenheit, which is an incredible feat when it's super cold. How do you move your water bottles during the day without having them freeze? Well, the first method is if you happen to be dragging a sled, which I like to do quite often, is you get your sled, you get your sled all set up, and then instead of jamming your sleeping bag into its stuff sack, what you do is you get your sleeping bag somewhat stuffed into your stuff sack, but you leave the head area open and unstuffed and then you put your water bottles in the waterproof bag and you make sure they're all sitting upright you simply place them in your sleeping bag and you close them up if that bothers you and it's kind of risky for you to have your sleeping bag out in your sled instead what you can do is again assuming you don't need it is take your down parka wrap the bottles in here and then jam your parka into your sled. You know, put everything you can around those water bottles and they won't freeze. I've had it where it's been minus 40 and minus 50 degrees and I've gotten my water bottles out of my down sleeping bag and parka. And this is in windy Antarctica, mind you. And uh, I've opened the bottles, cracked them open. And there's a little bit of ice on the lid. I open it up poke it out with a knife or a stick or whatever I might have and then I'm able to drink. So by putting your water bottles inside your down insulation while you're, tra while you're traveling in the day with your sled it works super well. The third style of travel is of course backpacking. So I'm going to put the sled up here and you use the same methodology as you did with the sled, you get your sleeping bag is going to have to be fully compressed to get down into the base of your backpack. And then in the core of your backpack, once you get everything else loaded, you're going to fully unzip your parka because you might need it in an emergency. Ideally, you're not going to need your parka if you're climbing or hiking or whatever, because that means it's really cold. And again, you get your water bottles, you get them in the neoprene sleeves, which are here and here. And you simply wrap your water bottles inside your parka, inside your backpack. And that way you're ready to go for your next day of climbing. Now, if you're, if you're climbing in uh, Denali or something where you don't want to have to get into your backpack or anything, one of these sleeves that goes over a water bottle is super handy. 
The neoprene, when it's outside and it's windy, it doesn't perform that great. Your water bottle will ice up, but just want to be make things as accessible as possible while still providing insulation to the bottles. And I have never had my bottles freeze totally solid. At minus 45 degrees and minus 50 degrees, when it's in the dark, like in Yellowstone or the Arctic, uh, there's going to be some ice on there. It definitely builds up. But just remember, don't do the upside down bottle trick because, oh, in theory, the ice will form up here. I promise the bottle will freeze shut. I will put a link below to another video I've done about how to prevent your water bottle from completely freezing shut. So that is a set of three different series of techniques for when you're camping, climbing, and dragging a sled across whatever frozen wasteland you're enjoying. My name is Aaron Linstow. I'm a polar explorer and professional adventurer. Please like and comment on the video and subscribe to the channel. Check out my link below to how to keep your feet warm in the cold and also Adventure Expedition 1, my complete book with Dr. Terry Williams on how to keep your bottles warm and yourself safe in the outdoors. Thank you very much for watching and enjoy your adventures.